This is the story of United Airlines Flight 1175. On the 13th of February 2018, a huge Boeing 777 was to take off from San Francisco International Airport to Hawaii's Honolulu International Airport. The jet was packed with 378 people on board. The plane took off from San Francisco with no issues whatsoever, and it made its way across the Pacific Ocean with no issues. As the plane was getting close to Hawaii, everyone on board was getting ready for the landing. They were still at 36,000 feet, and they had not begun their descent yet. At noon Hawaiian time, Flight 1175 was about 40 minutes from landing. That is when the plane was rocked by a huge explosion. The flight crew heard a loud bang and then the plane started shaking. Their ICAST displays lit up with warnings of a compressor stall on engine number two, the right-hand engine. The bang had disconnected the autopilot and the plane started to yaw to the right. The captain immediately called my controls and took control of the plane, riding the plane while he tried to figure out what was happening to his jet. They kept getting an intermittent warning on their consoles about the right-hand engine failing. Something catastrophic had happened on the right-hand engine, and the pilots weren't taking any chances. The captain called for the severe engine damage checklist, and the first officer started going through the checklist while the captain focused his attention on keeping the massive plane in the sky. Once the engine was shut down, the pilots could feel that the vibrations had gone down, but they knew that the controllability of the plane was not normal. Now that they had a good handle on the situation, the pilots contacted the controllers about what was happening to them and declared an emergency. The captain sent the person in the jump seat into the cabin so that they could have a good idea of what was happening with the right-hand engine. The jump seater did not have good news for the captain. He took a video of the engine and showed it to the captain and it showed the engine just swinging from side to side with most of its cowlings missing. I mean, this engine was destroyed. The bang that everyone had heard on board now made sense. For whatever reason, the right-hand engine of the 777 had failed, and catastrophically at that. The pilots now needed to get this plane on the ground as soon as possible. Their destination of Honolulu was indeed the closest airport to them. Since the flight was almost over, the pilots did not have to worry about weight being an issue, or else they would have to dump some fuel overboard. And believe me, sometimes that can be an issue. With that, the pilots carefully lined the jet up with runway 8 right and Honolulu. The pilots would be carrying out a visual approach for this landing. And soon after that, Flight 1175 made a safe landing. The interesting thing is that mere decades ago, the 777 or a plane like that would not have been able to make this crossing. You see, back in the day, the FAA banned planes with fewer than three engines from flying over large bodies of water because jet engines were new and they failed a lot. So the wisdom was that the more number of engines you have, the better your chances of losing a few engines and making it back alive. They really loved this rule. For example, in 1980, the FAA administrator Lynn Helms said this, and I quote, It'll be a cold day in hell before I let twins fly long haul over overwater routes, end quote. But just two years later, hell started to thaw as the FAA started seriously studying the possibility of letting twins fly long distances over water. They then relented and let twin-engine airplanes fly over water, but not without any restrictions though. You see, each plane had an ETOPS rating, or Extended Range Twin-Engine Operation Performance Standards, or more colloquially known as engines turn or passenger swim. It's basically the amount of time a plane can legally fly away from a diversion airport. In the case of the 777-200 that United was flying that day, it had an ETOPS rating of 180 minutes. In other words, at all points in its journey, it had to be utmost 180 minutes away from a diversion airport. So if something did go wrong with one of the engines, the plane could safely reach an emergency airport on just one engine. In the case of Flight 1175, all that ETOPS preparation came together perfectly to get this damaged plane back on the ground in one piece. Well, not one piece, but you know what I'm trying to say. Once on the ground, they could finally see the extent of the damage on the plane. The number 11 blade on the engine was broken and they found shards of the fan blade embedded in the exit guide vanes of the engine. The interior of the casing of the engine cowling was coated in Kevlar and the interior was pretty banged up. I mean, that's understandable. It had a front row seat to an engine disintegrating. The engine had torn itself apart to the point where inlets were no longer attached to the engine. But thankfully, the worst of the damage was confined to the engine, and that's a big deal. 
as flying debris can impinge on anything from fuel stores to hydraulic lines to the people who are sitting inside the cabin. So, what happened? What caused the right-hand engine on a 777 to catastrophically fail, putting 378 lives at risk? Well, the engine in question was a Pratt & Whitney PW4077, and it had accumulated 77,593 flight hours in 13,921 cycles. To understand what this engine had been through, they started to look through the maintenance history of the engine that failed, specifically on the blade that had snapped. They found out that the blades had undergone two overhauls, and the overhauls included something known as Thermal Acoustic Imaging, or TAI. Thermal Acoustic Imaging is a tech developed by Pratt & Whitney to non-destructively test fan blades for cracks, especially cracks that start from within the blades themselves. Tests had concluded that these blades had cracks in them that originated from an area of microtexturing, which primarily consisted of alpha particles. Now, I am not a metallurgist, but from what I can tell, titanium, the stuff that the fan blades were made out of, has two phases or molecular arrangements, if you will. An alpha phase and a beta phase. Each phase has its own properties, advantages and disadvantages. In this case, there was a bit of the alpha phase in the titanium, and that's where the cracks started. But like we said before, there were ways to detect these cracks before they ever became an issue. So why didn't those processes work? Pulling up the thermal acoustic imaging files from both 2010 and 2015, the investigators found what they were looking for. The data showed an indication in the spot where the blade had failed. The data from 2015 revealed a bigger indication. The test was telling them that there was a crack in that location and it was just growing over the years. But unfortunately, the inspectors who were looking at the data just said that what they were seeing was a result of the paint that was used on the blades. And so with that mistake, these faulty blades were pushed back into service. The people who inspect these blades are highly trained and highly educated. So there's more to the story. Thus, the investigators kept digging. You know how I told you that these inspectors are highly trained and educated? Yeah, that's true, but there's an asterisk here. The investigators found out that Pratt & Whitney didn't really have a training and certification regimen for these inspectors. The first person that inspected these blades were trained by the engineers who developed the technology, and the second inspector was trained by the first inspector. This was like a high-tech version of the game Telephone. This was because TAI, a thermal acoustic inspection, was an emerging technology, and it was still being worked on and refined. Now, this is where the story becomes really insane. The inspection of these blades took place in a room in Hartford, Connecticut, and the room had large windows. Now, you're probably like, wait, what does windows have to do with how an airplane engine exploded? Now, dear imaginary viewer that I just made up, bear with me. In the afternoon, the sun would shine through the windows into the room, heating it up. It would get so bad that one AC unit couldn't keep up, and so they had to bring in another AC unit to keep the room temperature right. But it wasn't perfect, and that is because TAI, a thermal acoustic inspection, needed the temperature to be just right because it was just so sensitive. I mean, it's thermal acoustic imaging. Thermal is right there in the name. Now, since the room was so badly insulated from the outside Hartford summer sun, the heat would mess with the output of the TEI, causing ghosting on the images on the thermal scans, making it harder for workers to detect cracks like the ones that destroyed the engine on flight 1175. Thus, due to those mistakes, cracks could, well, slip through the cracks. For such a high-tech problem, the solution was pretty simple. A new AC unit and some tinted windows. Well... Who would have thought it? Another problem here is that the inspectors were never told anything about the blades that they did reject. They were never told if the rejection that they made was right or if an incorrect rejection had been made, and they were never told why they were wrong. So in a way, that robbed the inspectors of the opportunity to grow from their own mistakes. And then it led to something like this. I guess if something can really happen, it will happen, huh? Well, that's it for this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.